CIET NCERT presents Contemporary India The audio textbook in geography for class 10 part 2 Chapter 1 Resources and development Page 1 Resources and development Friends Can you identify and name the various items used in making life comfortable in our villages and towns list the items and name the material used in their making everything available in our environment which can be used to satisfy our needs provided it is technologically accessible economically feasible and culturally acceptable can be termed as resource figure 1.1 This figure explains the relationship of human beings with the physical environment that is nature, technology and institutions. The process of transformation of things available in our environment involves an interdependent relationship between nature, technology and institutions. Human beings interact with nature through technology and create institutions to accelerate their economic development do you think that resources are free gifts of nature as is assumed by many they may not resources are a function of human activities human beings themselves are essential components of resources they transform material available in our environment into resources and use them These resources can be classified in the following ways: A. on the basis of origin, biotic and abiotic. B. on the basis of exhaustibility, that is renewable and non-renewable. C. on the basis of ownership, individual, community, national and international. D. on the basis of status of development. potential developed stock and reserves figure 1.2 classification of resources resources can be classified into two broad categories natural resources and human resources natural resources are then subdivided into renewable resources and non-renewable resources Under renewable resources we have continuous or flow example wind and water and the second category under renewable is biological which has another two categories natural vegetation that is forests and wildlife the non renewable resources are classified into two categories recyclable example metals and non recyclable example fossil fuels the human resources are divided into only two categories first the structures and institutions and second quantity and quality activity identify at least two resources from each category page 2 types of resources on the basis of origin biotic resources these are obtained from biosphere and have life such as human beings flora and fauna fisheries livestock etc abiotic resources all those things which are composed of non living things are called biotic resources for example rocks and metals on the basis of exhaustibility renewable resources the resources which can be renewed or reproduced by physical chemical or mechanical processes are known as renewable or replenishable resources for example solar and wind energy water forests and wildlife etc the renewable resource may further be divided into continuous or flow the description is given 
in figure 1.2 which has already been explained to us. Non-renewable resources. These occur over a very long geological time. Minerals and fossil fuels are examples of such resources. These resources take millions of years in their formation. Some of the resources, like metals, are recyclable and some, like fossil fuel, cannot be recycled and get exhausted with their use. On the basis of ownership, individual resources, these are also owned privately by individuals. Many farmers own land which is allotted to them by government against the payment of revenue. In villages, there are people with land ownership, but there are many who are landless. Urban people own plots, houses and other property. Plantation, pasture lands, ponds, water in wells, etc. are some of the examples of resources ownership by individuals. Make a list of resources owned by your household. Community-owned resources. There are resources which are accessible to all the members of the community. Village commons, grazing grounds, burial grounds, village ponds, etc. Public parks, picnic spots, playgrounds in urban areas are de facto accessible to all the people living there. National resources. Technically, all the resources belong to the nation. The country has legal powers to acquire even private property for public good. You might have seen roads, canals, railways being constructed on fields owned by some individuals. Urban development authorities get empowered by the government to acquire land. All the minerals water resources, forests, wildlife, land within the political boundaries and oceanic area up to 12 nautical miles, that is 22.2 km, from the coast termed as territorial water and resources therein belong to the nation. International Resources there are international institutions which regulate some resources. The oceanic resources beyond 200 nautical miles of the exclusive economic zone belong to open ocean and no individual country can utilize these without the concurrence of international institutions. Do you know that India has got the right to mine manganese nodules from the bed of the Indian Ocean, from that area which lies beyond the exclusive economic zone. Identify some other resources which are international in nature. On the basis of the status of development. Potential resources. Resources which are found in a region but have not been utilized. For example... The western parts of India, particularly Rajasthan and Gujarat, have enormous potential for the development of wind and solar energy. But so far, these have not been developed properly. Developed resources. Resources which are surveyed and their quality and quantity have been determined for utilization. The development of resources depends on technology and level of their feasibility. Stock, materials in the environment which have the potential to satisfy human needs but human beings do not have the appropriate technology to access these are included among stock. For example, water is a compound of two inflammable gases, hydrogen and oxygen, which can be used as a rich source of energy. But we do not have the required technical know-how to use them for this purpose. Hence, it can be considered as stock. For example, water is a compound of two inflammable gases, hydrogen and oxygen, which can be used as a rich source of energy. But we do not have the required technical know-how to use them for this purpose. 
Hence, it can be considered as stock. Reserves Reserves are the subset of the stock, which can be put into use with the help of existing technical know-how, but their use has not been started. These can be used for meeting future requirements. River water can be used for generating hydroelectric power, but presently it is being utilized only to a limited extent. Thus, the water in the dams, forests, etc. is a reserve which can be used in the future. Activity Prepare a list of stock and reserve resources that you are familiar with from your local area. Page 3 Development and Resources Resources are vital for human survival as well as for maintaining the quality of life. It was believed that resources are free gifts of nature. As a result, human beings used them indiscriminately and this has led to the major problems. First, depletion of resources for satisfying the greed of few individuals. Second, accumulation of resources in few hands, which in turn divided the society into two segments, that is, haves and have-nots, or rich and poor. Third, indiscriminate exploitation of resources has led to global ecological crises such as global warming, ozone layer depletion, environmental pollution and land degradation. An equitable distribution of resources has become essential for a sustained quality of life and global peace. If the present trend of resource depletion by a few individuals and countries continues, the future of our planet is in danger. Therefore, resource planning is essential for sustainable existence of all forms of life. Sustainable existence is a component of sustainable development. Sustainable economic development means development should take place without damaging the environment and development in the present should not compromise with the needs of the future generations. Rio de Janeiro Earth Summit 1992 In June 1992, more than 100 heads of states met in Rio de Janeiro in Brazil for the first International Earth Summit. The summit was convened for addressing urgent problems of environmental protection and socio-economic development at the global level. The assembled leaders signed the Declaration on Global Climatic Change and Biological Diversity. The Rio Convention endorsed the Global Forest Principles and adopted Agenda 21 for achieving sustainable development in the 21st century. Agenda 21 It is the declaration signed by world leaders in 1992 at the United Nations Conference on Environment and Development, UNCED which took place at Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. It aims at achieving global sustainable development. It is an agenda to combat environmental damage, poverty, disease through global cooperation on common interest, mutual needs and shared responsibilities. One major objective of the Agenda 21 is that every local government should draw their own local agenda 21. Activity 1. Imagine if the oil supply gets exhausted one day, how would this affect your lifestyle? 2. Plan a survey in your colony, village, to investigate people's attitude towards recycling of the domestic agricultural wastes. Ask questions about a. What do they think about resources they use? B. 
What is their opinion about the wastes and its utilization? C. Collage your results. Page 4. Resource planning. Planning is widely accepted strategy for judicious use of resources. It has importance in a country like India, which has enormous diversity in the availability of resources. There are regions which are rich in certain types of resources, but are deficient in some other resources. There are some regions which can be considered self-sufficient in terms of availability of resources, and there are some regions which have acute shortage of some vital resources. For example, the states of Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh and Madhya Pradesh are rich in minerals and coal deposits. Arunachal Pradesh has abundance of water resources, but lacks in infrastructural development. The state of Rajasthan is very well endowed with solar and wind energy, but lacks in water resources. The coal desert of Ladakh is relatively isolated from the rest of the country. It has very rich cultural heritage, but is deficient in water, infrastructure and some vital minerals. This calls for balanced resource planning at the national, state, regional and local levels. Activity Prepare a list of resources found in your state and also identify the resources that are important but deficit in your state. Resource planning in India Resource planning is a complex process that involves first, identification and inventory of resources across the regions of the country. This involves surveying, mapping and qualitative and quantitative estimation and measurement of resources. Second, evolving a planning structure endowed with appropriate technology, skill and institutional setup for implementing resource development plans. Third, matching the resource development plans with overall national development plans. India has made concerted efforts for achieving the goals of resource planning right from the first five-year plan launched after independence. The availability of resources is a necessary condition for the development of any region. But mere availability of resources in the absence of corresponding changes in technology and institutions may hinder development. There are many regions in our country that are rich in resources, but these are included in economically backward regions. On the contrary, there are some regions which have a poor resource base, but they are economically developed. Can you name some resource-rich but economically backward regions and some resource-poor but economically developed regions? Give reasons for such a situation. The history of colonization reveals that rich resources in colonies were the main attractions for the foreign invaders. It was primarily the higher level of technological development of the colonizing countries that helped them to exploit resources of other regions and establish their supremacy over the colonies. Therefore, resources can contribute to development only when they are accompanied by appropriate technological development and institutional changes. India has experienced all this in different phases of colonization. Therefore, in India, development in general and resource development in particular does not only involve the availability of resources but also the technology, quality of human resources and the historical experiences of the people. Find out what resources are being developed in your surroundings by the community, 
village panchayats, ward level communities with the help of community participation, conservation of resources. Resources are vital for any developmental activity. But irrational consumption and overutilization of resources may lead to socio-economic and environmental problems. To overcome these problems, resource conservation at various levels is important. This had been the main concern of the leaders and thinkers in the past. For example, Gandhiji was very apt in voicing his concern about resource conservation in these words. He said, There is enough for everybody's need and not for anybody's greed. He placed the greedy and selfish individuals and exploitative nature of modern technology as the root cause for resource depletion at the global level. He was against mass production and wanted to replace it with the production by the masses. From the box. At the international level, the Club of Rome advocated resource conservation for the first time in a more systematic way in 1968. Subsequently, in 1974, Gandhian philosophy was once again presented by Schumacher in his book Small is Beautiful. The seminal contribution with respect to resource conservation at the global level was made by the Brundtland Commission Report in 1987. This report introduced the concept of sustainable development and advocated it as a means of resource conservation, which was subsequently published in a book entitled Our Common Future. Another significant contribution was made at the Earth Summit at Rio de Janeiro, Brazil in 1992. Page 5. Land Resources We live on land. We perform our economic activities on land and we use it in different ways. Thus, land is a natural resource of utmost importance. It supports natural vegetation, wildlife, human life, economic activities, transport and communication systems. However, land is an asset of a finite magnitude. Therefore, it is important to use the available land for various purposes with careful planning. India has land under a variety of relief features namely mountains, plateaus, plains and islands. About 43% of land area is plain, which provides facilities for agriculture and industry. Mountains account for 30% of the total surface area of the country and ensure perennial flow of some rivers, provide facilities for tourism and ecological aspects. About 27% of the area of the country is the plateau region. It possesses rich reserves of minerals, fossil fuels and forests. Figure 1.3 This pie diagram explains land under important relief features where it shows plains are 43%, mountains covers the total land cover of 30% and plateaus as 27%. Land utilization. Land resources are used for following purposes. First, forests. Second, Land not available for cultivation. A. Barren and wasteland. B. Land put on agricultural uses, example buildings, roads, factories, etc. Third, the uncultivated land, which excludes the fallow land. It is further categorized into three. A. Permanent pastures 
and grazing land b land under miscellaneous tree crops groves which is not included in that net zone area c cultivable wasteland which is left uncultivated for more than 5 agricultural years fourth fallow lands which is subdivided into two categories a current fallow which is left without cultivation for one or less than one agricultural year b other than current fallow which is left uncultivated for the past 1 to 5 agricultural years fifth net zone area area sown more than once in an agricultural year plus net zone area is known as gross cropped area land use pattern in india the use of land is determined both by physical factors such as topography climate soil types as well as human factors such as population density technological capability and culture and traditions etc total geographical area of india is 3.28 million square kilometer land use data however is available only for 93% of the total geographical area because the land use reporting for most of the northeast states except assam has not been done fully moreover some areas of jammu and kashmir occupied by pakistan and china have also not been surveyed page 6 figure 1.4 the given pie charts have been taken from the directorate of economics and statistics ministry of agriculture 2008 2009 it explains the general land use categories in the years 1960 61 and 2008 2009 the reporting area is 100% and the categories mentioned forest barren and unculturable wasteland area under non agricultural uses permanent pasture and grazing land area under miscellaneous tree crops and groves culturable wasteland fallow other than current fallow current fallow and net zone area broadly net zone area has increased from 45.26% to 46.24% and barren land has decreased by 3% the land under permanent pasture has also decreased how are we able to feed our huge cattle population on this pasture land and what are the consequences of it most of the other than current fallow lands are either of poor quality or the cost of cultivation of such land is very high hence these lands are cultivated once or twice in about 2 to 3 years and if these are included in the net zone area then the percentage of nsa in india comes to about 54% of the total reporting area the pattern of net zone area varies greatly from one stage to another it is over 80% of the total area in punjab and haryana and less than 10% in arunachal pradesh mizoram manipur and andaman nicobar islands find out reasons for the low proportion of net zone area in these states forest area in the country is far lower than the desired 33% of geographical area as it was outlined in the national forest policy 1952 it was considered essential for the maintenance of ecological balance the livelihood of millions of people who live on the fringes of these forests depend upon it a part of the land is termed as wasteland and land put to other non agricultural uses wasteland includes rocky arid 
and desert areas and land put to other non-agricultural uses includes settlements, roads, railways, industry etc. Continuous use of land over a long period of time without taking appropriate measures to conserve and to manage it has resulted in land degradation. This, in turn, has serious repercussions on society and environment. Activity Try to do a comparison between the two pie charts, figure 1.4, given for land use and find out why the net zone area and the land zone area have changed from 1960-61 to 2008-2009 very marginally. Page 7. Land Degradation and Conservation Measures We have shared our land with the past generations and will have to do so with the future generations too. 95% of our basic needs for food, shelter and clothing are obtained from land. Human activities have not only brought about degradation of land, but have also aggravated the pace of natural forces to cause damage to land. At present, there are about 130 million hectares of degraded land in India. Approximately 28% of it belongs to the category of forest degraded area. 56% of it is water eroded area and the rest is affected by saline and alkaline deposits. Some human activities such as deforestation, overgrazing, mining and querying too have contributed significantly in land degradation. Figure 1.5 This pie chart depicts India's wastelands in the year 2000. According to this diagram, water eroded area is recorded as 56%, forest degraded area has been recorded as 28%, saline and alkaline land has been recorded as 6% and 10% wind eroded area. Mining sites are abandoned after excavation work is complete, leaving deep scars and traces of overburdening. In states like Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh, Madhya Pradesh and Odisha, deforestation due to mining have caused severe land degradation. In states like Gujarat, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh and Maharashtra, overgrazing is one of the main reasons for land degradation. In the states of Punjab, Haryana, Western Uttar Pradesh, over-irrigation is responsible for land degradation due to water logging, leading to increase in salinity and alkalinity in soil. The mineral processing, like grinding of limestone for cement industry and calcite and soapstone for ceramic industry, generate huge quantity of dust in the atmosphere. It retards the process of infiltration of water into the soil after it settles down on the land. In recent years, industrial effluents as waste have become a major source of land and water pollution in many parts of the country. There are many ways to solve the problems of land degradation. Afforestation and proper management of grazing can help to some extent. Planting of shelter belts of plants, control on overgrazing, stabilization of sand dunes by growing thorny bushes are some of the methods to check land degradation. Proper management of wastelands, control of mining activities, Proper discharge and disposal of industrial effluents and wastes after treatment can reduce land and water degradation in industrial and suburban areas. Page 8. Soil as a resource. Soil is the most important renewable natural resource. 
It is the medium of plant growth and supports different types of living organisms on the earth. The soil is a living system. It takes billions of years to form soil up to a few centimeter in depth. Relief, parent rock or bedrock, climate, vegetation and other forms of life and time are important factors in the formation of soil. Various forces of nature such as change in temperature, actions of running water, wind and glaciers, activities of decomposers etc. contribute to the formation of soil. Chemical and organic changes which take place in the soil are equally important. Soil also consists of organic, that is humus, and inorganic materials. Figure 1.6 Soil Profile It shows the four profile layers of a soil. Weathered parent bedrock lies in the lowermost strata, further to which is the disintegrated form which is the substratum weathered parent rock material, which then further gets fragmented into subsoil weathered rocks, sand and silt and clay, and then the topsoil, that is the upper soil layer. On the basis of the factors responsible for the formation of soil, color, thickness, texture, age, chemical and physical properties, the soils of India can be classified in different types. Classification of Soils India has varied relief features, landforms, climatic realms and vegetation types. These have contributed in the development of various types of soils. Alluvial Soils This is the most widely spread and important soil. In fact, the entire northern plains are made of alluvial soil. These have been deposited by three important Himalayan rivers, the Indus, the Ganga and the Brahmaputra. These soils also extend in Rajasthan and Gujarat through a narrow corridor. Alluvial soil is also found in the eastern coastal plains, particularly in the deltas of Mahanadi, the Godavari, the Krishna and the Kaveri rivers. Figure 1.7 Here is a picture given showing the alluvial soil. The alluvial soil consists of various proportions of sand, silt and clay. As we move inlands towards the river valleys, soil particles appear somewhat bigger in size. In the upper reaches of the river valley, that is, near the place of the break of slope, the soils are coarse. Such soils are more common in Piedmont plains such as Duars, Chos and Tarai. Apart from the size of their grains or components, soils are also described on the basis of their age. According to their age, Alluvial soils can be classified as old alluvial, that is Bangar, and new alluvial, that is Khadar. The Bangar soil has higher concentration of kankar nodules than the Khadar. It has more fine particles and is more fertile than the Bangar. Alluvial soils as a whole are very fertile. Mostly, these soils contain adequate proportion of potash, phosphoric acid and lime which are ideal for the growth of sugarcane, paddy, wheat and other cereal and pulse crops. Due to its high fertility, regions of alluvial soils are intensively cultivated and densely populated. Soils in the drier areas are more alkaline and can be productive after proper treatment and irrigation. Black soil. These soils are black in color and are also known as regar soils. Black soil is ideal for growing cotton and is also known as black cotton soil. 
It is believed that climatic conditions along with the parent rock material are the important factors for the formation of black soil. This type of soil is typical of Deccan trap, basalt, region spread over northwestern Deccan plateau and is made up of lava flows. They cover the plateaus of Maharashtra, Saurashtra, Malwa, Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh and extend in the southeast direction along the Godavari and Krishna valleys. The black soils are made up of extremely fine, that is clay material. They are well known for their capacity to hold moisture. In addition, they are rich in soil nutrients such as calcium carbonate, magnesium, potash and lime. These soils are generally poor in phosphoric contents. They develop deep cracks during hot weather, which helps in the proper aeration of the soil. These soils are sticky when wet and difficult to work on unless tilled immediately after the first shower or during the pre-monsoon period. Figure 1.8 A picture showing black soil. Page 9 Given here is the map of India showing the major soil types. First, forest and mountainous soil. It is confined to the mountainous region of North India, in Jammu and Kashmir, parts of Himachal Pradesh and Uttarakhand. Also, in Sikkim and northern fringes of Arunachal Pradesh. Alluvial soil. Alluvial soil has its expanse in the regions of Indo-Ganga Brahmaputra plains, including regions of Punjab, Haryana, Rajasthan, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Assam and West Bengal. It is also found in the deltaic regions along eastern coast. Red soil. It surrounds the black soil region from north and eastern side. It is found in parts of Chhattisgarh, Odisha, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu and most northeastern states of India. Black soil, also known as lava soil, is found mainly in Maharashtra and Gujarat. Laterite soil is found in the narrow zone along western coast. Arid soil is found in the western parts of Rajasthan. Page 10. Red and Yellow Soils Red soil develops on crystalline igneous rocks in areas of low rainfall in the eastern and southern parts of the Deccan Plateau. Yellow and red soils are also found in parts of Odisha, Chhattisgarh, southern parts of the Middle Ganga Plain, and along the Piedmont zone of the Western Ghats. These soils develop a reddish color due to diffusion of iron in crystalline and metamorphic rocks. It looks yellow when it occurs in a hydrated form. Laterite soil. Laterite has been derived from the Latin word later, which means brick. The laterite soil develops in areas with high temperature and heavy rainfall. This is the result of intense leaching due to heavy rain. Humus content of the soil is low because most of the microorganisms, particularly the decomposers like bacteria, get destroyed due to high temperature. Laterite soils are suitable for cultivation with adequate doses of manures and fertilizers. These soils are mainly found in Karnataka, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Madhya Pradesh and the hilly areas of Odisha and Assam. After adopting appropriate soil conservation techniques, particularly in the hilly areas of Karnataka, Kerala and Tamil Nadu, 
This soil is very useful for growing tea and coffee. Red laterite soils in Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh and Kerala are more suitable for crops like cashew nut. Figure 1.9 A picture showing laterite soil. Arid soils Arid soils range from red to brown in colour. They are generally sandy in texture and saline in nature. In some areas, the salt content is very high and common salt is obtained by evaporating the water. Due to dry climate, high temperature evaporation is faster and the soil lacks humus and moisture. The lower horizons of the soil are occupied by kankar because of the increasing calcium content downwards. The kankar layer formation in the bottom horizons restrict the infiltration of water. After proper irrigation, these soils become cultivable as has been in the case of western Rajasthan. Figure 1.10 A picture showing the arid soil. Forest soils These soils are found in the hilly and mountainous areas where sufficient rainforests are available. The soil's texture varies according to the mountain environment where they are formed. They are loamy and silty in valley sites and coarse-grained in the upper slopes. In the snow-covered areas of Himalayas, these soils experience denudation and are acidic with low humus content. The soils found in the lower parts of the valleys, particularly in the river terraces, the alluvial fans are fertile. Page 11. Soil Erosion and Soil Conservation The denudation of the soil cover and subsequent washing down is described as soil erosion. The processes of soil formation and erosion go on simultaneously and generally there is a balance between the two. Sometimes this balance is disturbed due to human activities like deforestation, overgrazing, construction and mining etc. While natural forces like wind, glacier and water lead to soil erosion. The running water cuts through the clay soils and makes deep channels as gullies. The land becomes unfit for cultivation and is known as bad land. In the Chumbal Basin, such lands are called ravines. Sometimes water flows as a sheet over large areas down a slope. In such cases, the topsoil is washed away. This is known as sheet erosion. Wind blows loose soil off flat or sloping land known as wind erosion. Soil erosion is also caused due to defective methods of farming. Plowing in a wrong way, that is, up and down the slope, form channels for a quick flow of water leading to soil erosion. Figure 1.11 A picture showing soil erosion. Figure 1.2 It shows the gully erosion. Plowing along the contour lines can decelerate the flow of water down the slopes. This is called contour plowing. Steps can be cut out on the slopes making terraces. Terrace cultivation restricts erosion. Western and central Himalayas have well-developed terrace farming. Large fields can be divided into strips. Strips of grass are left to grow between the crops. This breaks up the force of the wind. This method is known as strip cropping. Planting lines of trees to create shelter also works in a similar way. Rows of such trees are called shelter beds. These shelter beds have contributed significantly 
to the stabilization of sand dunes and in stabilizing the desert in western india page 12 state of india's environment point 1 the village of sukumajri and the district of jhabua has shown that it is possible to reverse land degradation tree density in sukumajri increased from 13% hectare in 1976 to 1272 per hectare in 1992 point 2 regeneration of the environment leads to economic well-being as a result of greater resource availability improved agriculture and animal care and subsequently increased incomes average annual household income in sukumajri ranged from rupees 10000 to 15000 between 1979 and 1984 point 3 people's management is essential for ecological restoration with people being made the decision makers by the madhya pradesh government 2.9 million hectares or about 1% of india's land area are being greened across the state through watershed management given here is a cartoon and the source from where it has been taken is the citizens fifth report 1999 center of science and environment cse new delhi it shows that the contractors and bureaucrats does not provide efficient and proper infrastructure for the community to progress hence the progress is slow page 13 question 1 which one of the following type of resources is iron ore the four choices given are a renewable b biotic c flow and d non renewable question 2 under which of the following type of resource can tidal energy be put the choices given are a replenishable b human made c abiotic and d non recyclable question 3 which one of the following is the main cause of land degradation in punjab the choices are a intensive cultivation b deforestation c over irrigation and d over grazing fourth question in which one of the following states is terrace cultivation practiced choices are a punjab b plains of uttar pradesh c haryana and d uttarakhand question 5 in which of the following states is black soil found a jammu and kashmir b gujarat c rajasthan d jharkhand question 2 answer the following questions in about 30 words there are four questions given under this category the first question goes as follows name the three states having black soil and the crop which is mainly grown in it question 2 what type of soil is found in the river deltas of the eastern coast give three main features of this type of soil question 3 what steps can be taken to control soil erosion in the hilly areas question 4 what are the biotic and abiotic resources give some examples question 3 answer the following questions in about 120 words the two question given are as follows question 1 explain land use pattern in india 
and why has the land under forest not increased much since 1960 and 61 question 2 how have technical and economic development led to more consumption of resources project activity project 1 make a project showing consumption and conservation of resources in your locality project 2 have a discussion in the class how to conserve various resources used in your school project 3 imagine if oil supplies get exhausted how will this affect our lifestyle project 4 solve the puzzle by following your search horizontally and vertically to find the hidden answers There's a huge puzzle given over here having 11 columns and 15 rows each graticule written is an alphabet and a few questions given at the bottom The first question Natural endowments in the form of land water vegetation and minerals Second a type of non-renewable resource third soil with high water retaining capacity fourth intensively leached soil of the monsoon climate fifth plantation of trees on a large scale to check soil erosion sixth the great plains of india are made up of these soils chapter 1 resources and development You were just listening to this chapter that contained pages 1 to 13. This chapter was read by Shiba Mal. Thank you.